microbiology students uh, in semester 2 we are going to learn about introduction to microbiology that is unit 1 and the first topic is discovery of microscope and we all know that at the every microorganism uh, we use micro uh, microscope to understand it with the at key level of observation this like fascinating microbial world how would have remained unknown at the microscope but not been invented and it was Roger Bacon in 1267 developed a lens for the first time and the Jane, Jason and Jason in 1590 about 300 years later developed a crude type microscope by placing two lenses without provision of focusing Galileo Galilei in 1610 developed a microscope with focusing device called OCLI. Till the name microscope not in use but proposed by Faber or Fabry in 1625. Uh, however, the such optical lenses did not show, ex show an existence of microorganism. It was not until the mid 17th century when it was developed an optical lens that shows the existence of microorganisms at a great diversity of microbial world begin to be recognized and this is the Hooke's microscope which is an ancient type of microscope and next this is the now we are using this type of electronic microscope this is the Hooke's microscope which is invented in 1670 uh, this is a specimen holder this is the objective is this helps uh, to focus this is the focusing screw which helps to adjust in the focus on the microorganism this is the barrel and this is the eyepiece this is the oil lamp and the water flask and this is now we are using this electron microscope Anton von Leeuwenhoek Leeuwenhoek is universally acknowledged as the father of microbiology we all know that he is the one who is called as the father of microbiology and he also discovered the protist and the bacteria and he used single lens microscope which he made to make the first observations of bacteria and the protozoa. And next topic aseptic techniques with reference to Sushruta Samhita. We all know that Sushruta Samhita is a foundational Ayurvedic test authorized by ancient Indian, uh, Indian physician Sushruta around 600 BC uh, offers an in invaluable insights into medicine and surgery this comprehensive guide includes description of surgical techniques like emphasizing cleanliness sterilization of instruments importance of a sanitizer at the surgical environment uh, deals mainly with the surgical knowledge next septic technique aseptic techniques with the reference to charak samhita charak samhita is an ancient indian medical text uh, discusses about the aseptic techniques. It also emphasizes the importance of cleanliness and hygiene in preventing the spread of the diseases. And next, it also describes techniques for sterilization, instruments, and dressings. Uh, deals mainly with the medicine knowledge. In Sushruta Samhita, it mainly uh, deals with the surgical knowledge, but in uh, Charak Samhita, it mainly deals with the medicine knowledge. And the aseptic techniques with reference to the Ignaz Philip Semmelweis. Uh, he is one the born in July 1st, 1818, and he's a Hungarian physician, and he's a no, also known as the, the first doctor to discover the medical benefits of hand washing. Uh, he is also known as the father of hand hygiene. Emphasis is uh, in the importance of cleanliness to reduce the spread of pathogens in healthcare settings. Business Philip was died on August 13, 1865. Next, the refutation of abiogenesis. In the 19th century, uh, Louis Pasteur disapproved the theory of abiogenesis, also known as the theory of spontaneous generation. We all know the sp theory of spontaneous generation we have uh, studied in the last semester one. Um, Pasteur's, Pasteur's experiment showed that life doesn't arise spontaneously. Microorganisms can only be produced by the production of pre-existing life forms. There is no evidence of the spontaneous formation of multicellular animals. Some element is needed to give rise to life. Uh, 
last uh, in last semester we have studied this this is the instrument uh, they used for the abiogenesis like theory of spontaneous genesis uh, um in this uh, class we take h2o water uh, ch4 and h3 and h2 methane ammonia and h2 and next this is the heat source in this we are going to take water the water is going uh, getting heated and this evaporation goes like this and it goes to these uh, sparks and mix with these gases and after that it goes into this condenser which is a cooling mechanism after condenser it comes uh, as a liquid and uh, later uh, it goes into this H2O flask this cyclic process is completely done about uh, 7 to 10 days after that uh, the, the in the, the resultant we can observe that the almost to some of the nucleic acid which are present in the living organisms are uh, formed in the entire resultant of this uh, process next germ theory of diseases the germ theory of diseases is the theory that uh, microscopic organisms cause specific diseases the theory was developed between 1850 to 1920 by the robert koch uh, louis Pasteur, john snow and the others it states that the microorganisms also known as pathogens or germs can cause disease. These organisms are too small to be seen without magnification and invade humans, other animals and the other living host. This is the experiment they have done to uh, describe about the germ theory of diseases. In this the first flask they applied heat and that they let the flask sit for a few minutes and then here we can observe that no bacteria is present. From this, uh, if uh, in the next step, they applied the heat to the same flask, but they removed the neck of the flask and uh, uh, left it for some time. Then after some time, some bacteria is present in that flask. In next step, um, they applied heat. After that, they tilt the flask to the sideways. Uh, uh, ne near the neck of the opening uh, then they let it be sit for few few minutes after that they have observed sorry, they have observed some bacteria here they have observed that some bacteria is present inside the flask in that case they observed that this is complete the of germ theory of diseases which is present inside the flask by this process next discovery of vaccination uh, in 1796 uh, english physician edward jenner discovered the world's first successful vaccine jenner noticed that uh, people infected with cowpox were immune to smallpox he tested this method on 8 year old James Philip uh, in May 1796. Philips uh, reacted to the cowpox matter and felt unwell for few, several days but made a full recovery. Two months later, Jenner inoculated Philips with matter from a human smallpox so to test his resistance. Philips remained in perfect health, the, person, the first person to be vaccinated against the small wax smallpox and next the discovery of penicillin in 1928 the scottish bacteriologist alexander fleming discovered penicillin while working at st mary's hospital in london fleming's discovery started the antibiotic revolution and led to the introduction of antibiotics that greatly reduced the number of deaths from infection fleming found mold growing on a petri dish of staphylococci bacteria they identified that the mole produced a self-defense chemical that would kill the bacteria. So, uh, he named the substance is called penicillin. And this is the picture of Alexander Fleming. And next we are going to know about some of the scientists. Uh, first one is the Edward Jenner. 
He is from the period uh, 1749 to 1823 and he is often considered the father of vaccines. In 1796, he was the first to scientifically test a method to protect against the smallpox. He is credited with uh, inventing vaccination uh, with the cowpox to replace the dangers of smallpox inoculation. And next is the Louis Pasteur. He is the French microbiologist and the chemist who made many contributions to the microbiology. His contributions include the pasteurization. We all know we use milk which is completely a pasteurized milk. In that uh, Pasteur invented the pasteurized process which kills the disease carrying microbes in milk and wine. Next is the Robert Koch. Uh, he from the period of 1843 to 1910 he considered the founder of modern biobacteriology his work is considered essential to proving the germ theory of diseases and that diseases are contagious he discovers uh, he discovered that the bacteria can cause uh, but disease and approved that the microorganisms that cause anthrax cholera tuberculosis he also discovered the bacteria that causes septicemia. Next is Joseph Lister. Uh, he found a way to prevent the infections in the wound during and the after the surgery. He was the first one to apply the science of germ theory to the surgery. Lister's antisepsis system is the basis of modern infection control. His principles made surgery safe and the continue to save countless lives. A countless lives. Next, Ivanovsky Martinus Bijanik. Uh, he is from the period of 1851 to 1931. He was a Dutch uh, microbiologist and the botanist. He is also known as the father of virology. In 1898, Bijanik was the first to call the incident of T tobacco mosaic virus. We all know this TMV virus, uh, tobacco mosaic virus. He also discovered new bacteria from soil, described biological nitrogen fixation and isolated bacillus radicicola in 1888. Next, Sergei Uh He is the one from the period of 1856 to the 1953, was a Russian microbiologist and the ecologist who made important contributions to the field of microbial ecology. Uh, Martinus Bijunik and Sergei Venogradsky are credited with the discovery of general microbiology which laid the groundwork for our understanding of microbial physiology diversity.